Today on Pro Church Daily, we're talking about how a church of 150 spent $109 on Facebook ads and got 241 new visitors. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Daily, the show where in 10 minutes or less, you'll get your daily dose of tips and tactics to help your church share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift we've seen in the last 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills. I'm joined as always by the boss man, it's Brady Shearer. And today we're talking about how a church of 150 people spent $109 on Facebook ads and got 241 new visitors. This is an email I got from a member of Pro Church Nation, Man. and I will read it out to you directly. It says, hi, Brady and the team. Just wanted to update you after you after using your guide on Facebook ads. For an Easter event we ran in our South London church of 150 last week for Palm Sunday. We ran two services, and our attendance increased to 446 people. <laughs> but the important measure is that we had 241 visitors as some church team attended both services, which skew the numbers slightly, but right around 241. As you can see from the advertisement below, the event was called Farm in the Church, and we had an indoor farm for Palm Sunday and utilized our connection. One of our church members is a well-known British face, former pop band member, now farmer, farmer, and TV (laughs) presenter, which certainly helped. We think that as an estimate, 40 to 50% of our visitors came via the Facebook ad. Undoubtedly, some came through invitations personally. Here's the link to our landing page. And then there's some data on here. Clicks to the website, 280 cost per click, about 38 cents. Total cost, $109. Targeting everyone 18 to 65 years old within our geographical location, give or take within five miles of the church. Hope you are encouraged, Brady. We are so excited with the impact. We did a big push for people to come back to church for Easter Sunday this week and sign ups and a cinema ticket giveaway. Thanks and God bless from Johnny. Wow. So pretty exciting. Yeah. I wouldn't even know what to do with that many visitors. Yeah, it's just too much of a good thing. <laughs> yeah. We want to talk about Facebook ads because Facebook ads present to us the single best promotion and advertising platform that has ever existed in human history. There's three reasons for this. One, simply put, the attention is unmatched by any other platform ever. Seven out of every 10 American adults is active on Facebook, more than a billion users, and it's not just America. For instance, that case study was from Britain, from London, and it works everywhere. So that's the first thing. You've got huge attention. This is why Facebook is superior to radio and a billboard, for instance. And there are other reasons, but this reason alone shows why it's vastly superior. There's just more people. Yeah. Second reason is that it's underpriced. I was talking with a church of about 70 people, rural church. He said he spent $5,000 on a billboard. $5,000 on a billboard. That's a church of 70. This church spent $109 on Facebook ads. The underpriced amount of Facebook ads is drastic when you compare it to traditional advertising, yeah. billboards, radio, video, print mailouts, whatever it might be. Facebook ads is just so, so much more affordable. Mm-hmm. Third and final reason has to do with the digital nature of Facebook. If you print out a mailer and send it out, you get one shot. And if you call your wife, uh, pastor's wife, Derby, instead of Debbie, real example, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what you do when yeah. you're introduced to the neighborhood as Pastor Derby. Yeah, that's how life. it is. With Facebook, like all digital, if the creative isn't working, swap it out. Yeah. You can run multiple creative of at course. once, A-B test, compare it. And this allows, if you mess up or if you screw up, which you will, because it's a giant platform, takes a little bit to learn, mm-hmm. you can change and adjust on the fly. Yeah. Print is permanent, digital is not. So how can you do this in your own church? Well, there's three simple steps to making this happen. Now, this individual from Pro Church Nation, Johnny, was inspired by a guide that we put together of another church, and that guide similarly was called How a Church of 120 Spent $78 on Facebook Ads and Got 47 New Visitors. That was an American church. We have made that PDF download available for free in the show notes. No opt-in required. Just click on the link. You can access the full PDF. It's in the show notes. Click it, access it, read through it. Three steps to making this happen at your church. Step number one, you don't want to promote your church service. This is the key. What did Johnny and his team do? They promoted Easter on the farm. Farm at church. Yeah, something. Farming <laughs> Easter at the church farm. There's a farm inside of our church. It wasn't just a regular service. And the reason for this is yeah. to make this work, you need to stop the scroll. You got to understand, with Facebook, unlike with Google search, people are not searching for your church. They're scrolling through their feed, learning about cat videos. And then your event pops up. It's naturally disruptive and annoying. Yeah. You need to 
promote an ad where you find the intersection between what your church can offer the world and what your audience would value. Mm -hmm. Generally in church, there's an intersection in three different areas in order of best use. You've got parenting, Easter on the farm. Yeah. You've got marriage, you've got finances. Hmm. Three areas everybody cares about, everyone knows is important, and three areas where the church can uniquely speak into offering biblical wisdom that Jesus demonstrated through us, through the scriptures. Yeah. So you want to promote an event, a special event that isn't just come to church. Because if someone's scrolling through the Facebook feed, that's disruptive and annoying, and they don't want to attend your church, mm-hmm. you've already lost. That's the first step. Okay. Step number two, targeting. You want to target those, let's say this, Facebook has crazy targeting, yeah. and you can do so much. I want to keep it basic to start. You can get more advanced as you do more Facebook ads. Start with targeting those that are 18 to 65 plus within, let's say, 10 miles of your church's geographic location. So target people that are close enough to your church that they would be willing to drive. Hmm. And then the third step is you need a landing page with a form. So when you are creating a Facebook ad, you're creating a link on Facebook, essentially. There are other ways that you can do this. The most powerful is still creating a link where someone clicks on the link and they are redirected to another page, a page on your website. So you could build it with, with Nucleus. You can build it with, hopefully, any church website builder You can build them with there. MailChimp now for free. They do landing pages That's for true. free. You can yeah. build one directly with MailChimp. And the reason MailChimp does it, and this is important to the page you want to build, is you want to have a form on there mm-hmm. to capture the information. And this is how you track your Facebook ads to see how well they're working. So let's say you have 100 click-throughs from your Facebook ad to your landing page with a form. And that form is basically you saying, hey, we're hosting Easter on the farm. We'd love to host your family for free. Fill out the form below and you'll be our special VIP. Give them an incentive to fill it out. Mm -hmm. You'll be our special VIP. And when you arrive, we're going to give your kids a free grab bag that is normally $5 or something. Yeah. Now there's an incentive to fill the form out. Let's say... 50 of the 100 people that visit that page or 40, you know, anywhere between anywhere between 20 anywhere above 25% is a good conversion rate okay. for this type of Facebook ad uh, platform strategy. Fill out the form and now you know how many people are expected or willing or hopeful that they'll come on that special event day. Yeah. You can trigger a follow-up sequence. You could give them a call the day before. There are so many different things that you can do here to make it better, but that is the simple three-step process. Step one, you wanna create an event, sponsor an event, not church-related, the intersection between what your church can offer and what an audience would value. Right. Step number two, target those within a 10-mile geographic radius, radius, radius yes. of your church. I wanted to say radiance. And then step three, create a landing page with a form where you can track signups. 25% or above is a great signup rate. Trigger a follow-up sequence and follow up those people. Then they come to your church and then your church follow-up sequence can take it from there. Yeah. And you know what's interesting about this Facebook ad strategy? And and I learned this myself by going through some of these uh, free case studies that, that we have, is that a lot of um, th- these strategies, like all three of these steps are a little bit counterintuitive. Like, at least for me, like I would think, oh, I'm going to advertise my service. So I'm going to like use our sermon graphic as, as the ad. Well, no, don't do that. Grave digger. Yeah, don't do that. And then I get to step two to, and, and, and you say, you know, target a, within a 10 mile radius. My, my intuition would say, oh, let's, 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 you know, spread this radius as, as wide as it can get and target everybody. So I can, I can have a bigger radius and I'll reach more people. No, like you said, target the people within a small radius that are actually going to like walk to your church or drive to your church. And one side note to that is it's completely dependent on if you're in rural or urban. So if you're in Manhattan, a 10 mile radius would not be good. Yeah. And if you are in, you know, rural Montana, it might need to be more than 10, you know, Urbanites in Manhattan are used to walking a block or two. Maybe ruralites in Montana are used to driving 30 minutes at least. So that can vary, but it's a good starting point. Yeah, and then having a specific landing page is just smart. Like, you know, when I first started making Facebook ads, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll just visit website and they'll land on our homepage and see our website. Don't send them to your homepage. No, like have a landing page so that they can take a call to action. You can capture their their data and and connect with them and and facilitate a next step so that you actually find them visiting your church. But the thing that gets me about Facebook ads it's the return on investment for the the price that you're going to spend is it's unlike anything else it really really is yes. and and now's the time you know it, it's never been easier uh, to, to target the people who who need to be in your church. And so I, I think that these steps are really going to help people um, take action on that. We love hearing case studies like this so if it's about Facebook ads or anything that you have put into action, yeah. this stuff works. I receive DMs all the time. 
oh, I, I tried this thing that you said on Instagram <laughs> and it worked. I was like, well, of course it worked. Yeah. What do you think I'm just making this stuff yeah. up? Yeah. And so we love to hear your case studies and share them because it really gives confidence to other churches like, wait, this stuff actually does work. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can use this to convince my senior leadership to take a step. And then once something works, that's what's so powerful. Then you're like, wait. Like when I first made a dollar online, I was like, if I can make one, why can't I make a billion. Yeah. Like probably not a billion. <laughs> but I can make two. But sometimes you just need to like break that barrier. Yeah. You know, you break that four minute mile and somebody, everyone else is. Yeah. You just got to have that belief first. So send us a case study. And if you're listening or watching, make sure to download this case study linked in the show notes. That'll do it for this episode of Pro Church Daily. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode of Pro Church Daily. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss another video. And if you like this episode, why don't you go ahead and hit that like button? Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.